So I'm pretty sure you know by now that Doomsaw was averted over the weekend. The conversation has been had already. The IPP has agreed with the ECGN government to take a certain percentage of what they are owed and they will keep the lights on. We've heard that already, but there's a big question that we need to explore after this near miss. What really is the permanent solution? I don't have the answers. I've assembled a team that I hopefully will provide us the answers, that I hope will provide us the answers um, to that fundamental question. It's a question that we've been attempting to answer for years because, as you will see, the debt has been piling. We've introduced several measures to try and deal with the energy sector problem. So we don't come to the place where we are having threats, and sometimes the threats in the past, if you come to the 2013 up onto 2016 era, where the Dumso was a major uh, challenge for this economy, it actually was, was a three year, almost four years running. Um, this government hasn't had anything close to that, but the threats have been coming nonetheless. So how do we avert that? How do we find a permanent solution to this particular problem? So what is the agreement that was reached over the weekend? I think it must be on Friday that has led to this reprieve. The IPPs tell us today, I'm giving us a sense of the specifics uh, today, that they have agreed that it will be paid, the payment plan covers 35% of the electricity that they generate. This is according to the IPP's chamber uh, speaking to us today. Is that what the agreement actually says? We we'll hear the ECG's uh, point of view on this very specific agreement that was reached. They will take 35% for now. The rest will come over the period. They've also suspended their shutdown as a result of this agreement. But in that document that they issued, they warn that if the rest aren't paid, they will be forced to return to this threat that they put forward over the weekend. In fact, it's been a month and we were all counting down. Everybody was, was anxious, but it was averted. The man who led that negotiations and made that happen is with me in the studio today to help us walk through this. I'm really not interested so much about what just happened. I'm interested in the permanent solutions, but also we need to understand how we got here. If you don't diagnose a problem properly, you would be unable to prescribe a proper solution to it. The IPP thankfully says they will be engaging government and the ECG actively going forward to resolve all the outstanding financial issues. And there are many financial issues to deal with. Government expects to restructure, as we've been told by the finance ministry, I'm talking about the challenges that the government have to deal with, some $1.58 billion of IPP debt. And that in itself is a controversial matter because the IPPs, they are not really in favor of any form of restructuring. But I understand that it's part of the suggestions that have been put forward to them. Um, we'll see what has been the general acceptance within the uh, IPPs generally. They have a chamber, but in the chamber are individual members. And some of the members have different positions on some of the issues. So we need to drill down a bit more. If you look at the government position, they've asked the IPPs to you know, avail themselves of the restructuring. The government needs that space uh, because the debt has been piling. If you look at the IPPs position, they don't want to touch, they don't want government to touch their monies at all. But you know, something has to give um, so everybody else gets something at least for now. Now, let's talk about the debt situation. If you look at the IPP debt, 1.73 billion is what they put it at. I mean, I will check what, what the latest figure is. But the finance ministry data, the recent briefing that the finance minister put out um, recently, talks about the energy sector uh, legacy debt of 2 billion also. And I know these numbers, if you look at the various documents, some of them are shifting almost all the time. This is according to the finance minister very recently when he did that briefing, updating us on the, on the IMF program. He pulled that figure out. The IPPs themselves have pulled this figure out as well. And I've heard that sometimes it, it becomes necessary then to audit so you agree on what is actually owed before you begin to even think about what to pay and who to pay. But then you look at the average annual debt. And I found this interesting in the IMF document. And the IMF is actually being suggesting that we will actually still be accumulating an average of uh, $1 billion a year in energy sector debt. And they put a timeline possibly to 2024 ending unless we implement a program that the, the cabinet, this, this government, cabinet in 2019 uh, introduced, the energy uh, sector uh, recovery program, which was a fantastic program. And if you look at the I, I am a program document. It is in there as a solution to our problem. And I've been asking, mm -hmm. that program was to last 2019 to 2023, right? That, that is this year. 
What have we done in terms of meeting the, the targets, the timelines? Because that program had timelines uh, to it. And I find the targets, the objectives in there very noble. IMF document says, unless we implement that document and we implement it fully, we'll still be accumulating $1 billion a year, just energy sector. And this clearly is unsustainable. And you see why the uh, ECG has been complaining. Every annual accumulation for excess capacity, another challenge really, that the government has been harping on this problem, that excess capacity is costing them a lot. And they, the opposition party has disagreed that this is an issue, right? So we'll try and see whether we can reconcile this going forward. But the IPP is contributing significantly to our generation mix, and we can't do without them. Because we took a decision some time back that will bring in IPPs uh, to help us with thermal generation. If you look at the IPPs' uh, current, current uh, standing in terms of what they contribute, some 65% of the thermal power, 40% of the total power production. So bottom line, we can't do without them. And this graph tells its own story in terms of the share of the, the mix generally. You know, 1% solar, 38% hydro, and this is where they mostly play uh, in terms of the IPP. So clearly when you look at the picture, we can't do without them, right? And if you do the projections going forward, we possibly will need more of them, not less. But it's all about what kind of agreement are you signing with them? And I'm pretty sure you've had take or pay and take and pay, right? And which one you do determines whether you are gonna be hanged by the debt that you'll be accumulating. And this government had said, the nature of the contract that had been signed, that they had inherited, is what is the source of the problem. The opposition party completely disagrees uh, with that view. And so hopefully we can get to resolve this. But the, one of the things that fascinated me is, and one of the reasons why I was asking the fundamental question, how do you resolve this permanently? This latest threat to shut down by the IPPs isn't the first time they've done this. In fact, in the last three years, we have been tracking the timelines. Let's go to 2019 October. They issued a similar threat that they will shut down, 2019. You go to November 2020, again, another threat to shut down. And then you come to what we've been talking about right now, which is this July one that had just been averted. It was ending of June, but of course, we know that you know, we are talking about, uh, we are experiencing no doom so because they have averted again. So they have threatened, at least since 2019, three times at least, to shut down the power plant. And the question I simply want to get to is, how can we stop this threat, avert, threat, avert scenario that we've been repeating at least since 2019? How can we find a permanent solution to this? It is not for the want of trying. The previous government had tried. We set up the Energy Sector uh, Levies Act. We collected monies to deal with the you know, debt. It quite didn't solve the problem. We have the uh, Esla PLC, uh, a lot of us bought into that as well, bonds, they pay us, you know, they take some of the money, take loan from there, clear some of the debt. As I mentioned, my favorite one is the, this government's own initiative in 2019, the Energy Sector Recovery Program, um, which had a clear timeline in 2019-2023 to try and resolve the issues, make the, the sector financially viable, cabinet approved it. So what happened to it? Why are we seeing it in the IMF program? And IMF saying, that is what you need to implement. And I've seen the program, government is committing to fully implement that as well. But the timeline now is set, almost elapsing. So clearly, something needs to happen. And hopefully, my guest will help us with, this is not a politics. This is really a national conversation that must be had. Because at some point, we need to stop repeating this, this constant refrain, we'll shut down. We will negotiate. It's averted last minute. They repeat the cycle all over again. Can we say after today, after what happened on Friday, that we will not come back to a place of threat and avert? That's the conversation I'm going to be having after this. Stay with me. And thank you very much for joining us and staying with us on PM Express indeed. And PM Express 
always is uh, brought to you by Cherry Tree Properties. We develop spaces as though we were going to occupy them ourselves. Syntex tanks, it is strong, it is tough. Alomo Bites, experience greatness in every moment. And Ghana AIDS Commission. And uh, just for my sponsors, I just want you to know if you're looking for a tank that will last you a lifetime, uh, no matter your water needs, Syntex tanks has it all. Uh, Syntex tank is first, you introduce a double layer tank, and now you can have as many layers as you want. Syntex tanks is first, you introduce white inner layer tanks in Ghana. Uh, we now introduce you to the uh, customer specs order. You, indeed, you will have to specify your specs, which lets you order any color and size of preference. And it's only available at Syntex Tank. Syntex Tank gives you the largest, longest warranty of uh, seven years, which no other tank gives you uh, in Ghana. So uh, whatever your water consumption, size of project or demand, choose Syntex Tank. We have agents nationwide. Please call us on 0244-335-168 or shop online at syntexgh.com. Syntex Tank, a strong, a tough. And of course, you also may be looking for a house. But make sure when you get a house, you pay ECG. What do you do once you connect to it? And it's, it's, yeah, talking about houses, Cherry Tree Properties have something really great for you. Desires are wishes. Uh, beauty is a promise of happiness, but passion is everything. Thinking about buying a new home, talk to those who build with passion. Sloan Square, a new gated community development at Sakumono, is the place you really want to check out. Developed by Cherry Tree Properties, one of a kind, well planned luxury you have never experienced before. Contact 0553 662 366. 0553 662 366. Cherry Tree Properties, sophistication and class. Joining me in the studio is the um, head, the MD of the electricity company of Ghana, Samuel Dubik Mahama. Samuel, thank you for your time uh, here on PM Express. I'm grateful uh, to have you uh, joining us uh, tonight once again. In fact, the last time I was in your office, the last time I was in your office, you had shipped everybody away to go and look for money. Uh, so thankfully, uh, I guess you've made a bit, so it's good to come in the evening. Also joining us is uh, the a uh, ranking member on the Mines and Energy Committee in Parliament. Uh, John Junapo is my guest. Hello, John. Thanks for your time here on PM Express. How are you doing? I'm good. Great, great to have you. And, and indeed, uh, Dr. Steve Mate, a long time we'll see, Doc. I'm grateful that you could join us. Uh, how are you doing, Doc? I'm good. I'm good. Pleasure uh, to be on the show. Great, great to have you. And of course, the man who... Uh, has been leading uh, the, the conversations when it comes to the IPPs uh, since they started. Also, is joining us for a conversation. Elik Plem Kabla Apetogbo, uh, who is the CEO of the Chamber of Independent Power Producers. Hello, Elik Plem. How are you, sir? Very well. Thank you. Great. I mean, so just let me start with you just for quick clarity. I understand that the agreement is that you are, you are paid 35% of what you're owed. Is that what it is? Just confirm for me. No, that is not the case. Okay. We receive uh, a proposal from ECG. Uh, basically, it's a structure that we have to look at. I think we've agreed that to we'll return later to have a mutual agreement on how we move forward. Okay, but that number, I mean, I heard it on the on our midday news, you were speaking to my colleagues, is that a number that reflects what the meeting agreed? And if that's not the number, what was the number that you agreed? Uh, well, I will not provide that specific detail, but I think our basic demand was that we want at least 30% payment of our arrears as at the end of March. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that was what actually brought the whole shutdown issue. So, uh, We've not achieved that, but at any rate, it's always good to keep a relationship for the benefit okay. of the whole country. So you didn't get 30%. What did you get? <laughs> the, uh, fortunately, we have the MD here, but I think these are commercial details that uh, we cannot make public since we have not sealed the agreement yet. Okay, but you are, you've already confirmed that you didn't get the 30% that you were asking for. Exactly. So you got less than 30%. Yes. Okay. 
um, when will they hit your account? The, 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 whatever you got, the less than 30% you got, when will that hit your account? Or when, uh, when are you expecting that, it to hit your account? I mentioned that the offer he made uh, is something that we have to look at and get back to the drawing table for us to agree on a mutual point for us to uh, maybe go for the claim into our accounts. No, I mean, I'm, I'm confused because in your statement, you said you had an agreement. So, yes. so I mean, uh, okay. Yes. Uh, we, we ha the agreement, I mean, that we have received his offer or his proposal. Okay. And have agreed that for mutual reasons, we are holding on with our shutdown option and reconvene to agree on the terms that he has proposed in his offer. Oh, I see. So they are good terms. Okay. So what it means is, just clarify, okay? What it means is, whatever you have, the IPPs are now going to return to ECG to tell them whether you agree or not. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Actually, there are some material concerns in the, uh, the draft document we received, which actually requires some clarifications mm. as to make a firm agreement. Okay, so you, you don't have an agreement yet. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm okay. everybody's, this is, this is a big deal, so I, I just really want clarity. Your citizens say you have an agreement, but I've just heard you say you're now going to consult and come back and sit down to agree on the offer that they've made to you. So yes. you don't you know, have an agreement. The offer, the offer he made to us has to be accepted. Okay. And you can only accept it when you finally agree to the terms of that offer. Okay. So by agreement, I mean that we have mutually agreed that, okay, for the action we want to take, let's hold on, let's okay. suspend it. So the agreement is on the threat of shutdown. You've agreed you will not shut down. Exactly. But the substantive issue of what you're owed and how much you should be paid, you are, they've made an offer to you. You are going to return to the ECG with a position on that offer. Exactly. Okay. Is that what it is? You're hearing it from him. No, I, I get it. But you are the man who negotiated it because <laughs> it, it's, it's important we have this really cleared up. The most important thing is you so, said is... So, so... Uh, the shutdown is back. It's, no, the shutdown is it's, not it's back. Not, it's, no, sorry. The shutdown is so, a thing of the past. I, I can understand. Has been resolved. I can understand the whole NDA conversations and the call. So, uh, the legacy debt has been ring-fenced. Okay. Up to, uh, what do you call it, June. The agreement with that I gave to them was from July, moving forward, we are going to try to stay current. But in trying to stay current, we have to be realistic with some numbers based on what is consumed and the collection rate. So we looked at that and then we made them an offer, which in our opinion, we felt it was quite a substantial amount because it, it varied from, from what they've been receiving Maybe more than 100 or maybe 200 percent. You're paying them. Is it an offer to pay a percentage of what you owe them? No. So I'm not looking at the legacy debt. But I'm trying to make sure that we stay current moving forward. The legacy debt has been ring fenced, and that conversation is yet to be had. Okay. But to legacy forward, debt of how much? How much are you? So because I know that's a moving <clears> figure. Yeah, so. yeah, that's what I was explaining to yeah. you earlier. That it's around two billion now. Okay. So that's what you've ring fenced. Different. So this amount you've agreed is what the current so arrears. a month month or so up to June ring fence put down. Now we are in July. What we take from the power plant this July, we are going to make sure that we pay pay the new conversations that we've had. Okay. You understand? If, if 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 even we are not supposed we are not going to reach there. We should make sure that a substantial of that amount is paid. Okay. So your, the big question that if you ask Kelly Klim, he will tell you is, why are we where we are now? It's because there's lack of certainty. Mm. Nobody is saying that you shouldn't owe. What makes you a good creditor is how you, you, how you service your debt. That's what gives you the, the confidence or that allows something to be a going concern. Is it right then to say that this agreement essentially says bring certainty to the conversation about what I am taking from you. Yeah. I'm providing you certainty that now, from henceforth, I will pay you. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And it's a, it's a proposal that was given to them that's backed by a, a bank anyway. Okay. 
So it would be something well, within the line of maybe like... So at the end of July, whatever you've, you've consumed, you will pay them? Based on, based okay. on what we've agreed upon, they would see that, that, that said discount. Anything before July, you ring fence, and that's a conversation that you have going forward. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So, so that is the agreement. That's the agreement. Okay. Um, let me quickly get quick reactions to that. Um, Mr. Jinapo, what's, what's your take on this? Very, very important. Very, very, very important. The discussion was that you owe me about 1.7 billion, pay 30% other than that, I cannot stay carrying. Was that not a discussion? Yeah. Your question was straightforward. What are you doing with that amount outstanding? I'm not hearing that it's being ring fenced. Ring fenced to where? Ring fenced onto whose book? But when you are ring fencing a liability, it means that either you are creating a special purpose vehicle or you are ring fencing it to treat it at the national accounting level. This amount hasn't hit our national accounts. So if you ring fence it, where is it sitting? That is important. You cannot ring fence something and leave it at a bay. You must ring fence it, which means that you are taking it off your balance sheet, like we did with the legacy debt. We had a special purpose vehicle called Esla PLC. Ring fence the debt, transfer it, that liability to Esla PLC, and the receivables from the Esla levies is used to handle that liability. So if I'm hearing today that we are ring fenced, very, very uncertain. Any way I have spoken to the committee chairman, we will take this up at parliament. I can understand that they are very hesitant to give you information. Going forward, what bills are you going to be paying? We know the monthly bills. Are you going to pay 100% of that bills knowing that you cannot? But that is a fact. ECG in its current state cannot pay 100% of power that it buys. I have the latest ECG reports, and I'll just go to the document. ECG 2023 work plan for parliamentary select committee, page 3 of 36. This was presented by the current ECG. If you look at 2022, the sales, I'm not talking of purchases, for purchases could be another man. I'm talking of what they sold. They sold 10 billion and collected about 7 billion. So there's a 3 billion gap in terms of collection. And this collection includes areas, not staying current, because this collection includes people who owed previously and through very aggressive measures that the current MD is taking, and maybe his predecessor, it does appear that they are recouping something. So I thought that they'll be honest with us and tell us that they want to stay current with, say, 60% with 50%, so that the discussion then will be that the difference, how do we treat it? Mm. When you open up that way, all of us can bring suggestions. But when the IPP chamber and ECG itself <coughs> appears not to want to tell the public what exactly they've agreed to, it's problematic. Anyway, okay. when they appear before the committee... Stay, stay, stay with me. I'll okay. come to you quickly on that. Let me just get uh, Dr. S.C. Matthias' quick take. Doc, you've heard the, uh, the skeleton of their agreement. Give me your quick reaction. Yes, it gets um, a bit confusing. And, and I'm, I'm quite surprised that, uh, of course, on the part of ECG and the independent power producers, I can understand why they are being tight-lipped in terms of the terms of the proposals that have been made to them. And, and, and so it does not really help. Do I can understand? It does not help the conversation. Um, my good friend, John Jinapo, who I know is a member of the Mines and Energy Committee, does not also seem to know the details. Meanwhile, we were told that the committee was the one that facilitated this conversation mm. between the power producers and ECG. In fact, you're right. In, the, there, was a whole paragraph, there was a whole paragraph in the statement that was issued and signed by Alec Plim that gave a lot of credit to the Mice Energy Committee. He spoke English. Exactly. I'll do so it's quite I'll surprising do it. that on, on Honorable John Ginapo seems to be in the dark in terms of what was discussed uh, through the uh, facilitation of the Mines and Energy Committee. Uh, be that as it may, um, I'm aware that the new management of ECG has been doing a number of things to improve revenue collection. 
And I want to believe that perhaps the data in respect of the efforts being made and the results may have counted in trying to provide assurances to the IPPs uh, in terms of the ability of ECG to be able to meet substantial part of his uh, um, indebtedness going forward. Um, I'm, 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 I, I know, for instance, that, and we all know, actually, the aggressive revenue collection efforts they made in recent times, and they've given the assurance that this is not going to be a nine-day nine wonder. They're going to con continue with the revenue collection. I also know that they are doing some metering audit. Uh, in fact, they've been to my house on two occasions trying to um, assess the meter and, and make sure that the meters are reading correctly. And again, trying to check illegal connections and stuff like that. Uh, we also know that part of this problem has been the involvement of the political class in the procurement of meters. Mm. At one point, every Tom, Dick and Harry was bringing in meters. And this is not, they, did, they did not allow for standardization. And so we have substandard meters in the system which are not reading accurately and shortchanging ECG. Uh, all these have to be sorted out. And I know there are plans to do this. And so it gives me, I, I'm, I'm quite um, convinced that it is the data arising out of these interventions and plans of ECG that has given the IPP some assurance. Okay, stay with me. You heard Junapos questions. Yeah. Um, that he's posted mm -hmm. on, on what you've just told us, if I put you and Nelly Flynn. What, what's your reaction to that? You know, it's, first of all, some, some things are quite sad because I have never shied away from speaking to anybody. In fact, maybe my approach to or what I'm about to say, but the Honorable Ranking Member, I have never denied access to him to talk about issues or even if he decides to reach out to me about issues. I met the, not to sound a bit, um, how do I put it? But there is a problem. It's about where you position yourself on the problem and how to solve it. What is the problem? We owe. Can we pay? No, we can't. What do we do from now moving forward? The IMF or the World Bank has given you certain conditions to meet. He said it clearly. 100% the amounts, if we leave those PPEs the way they are, we cannot. We cannot pay. That's the truth. So what do you do? We are in a unique position. In any, in any situation you find yourself, what makes things beautiful is that the people you are working with are willing to adapt. That's what we found with all these PPEs. In, that, in, in other words, the IPPs? The IPPs are willing to adapt. The funniest thing is this. In all of these, these same IPPs are also looking for new PPAs. You understand? It's a conversation to be had. You cannot look at one person and say, you're 30%. You see, one of the vagueness of the whole request was pay us 30%. Was it to pay 30% to each company or bring 30% of the entire amount and then we share it according to what? The, the whole conversation was there. Do we have the capability to pay? No. So if we don't have you the need, capability, you know, capability to, to pay, pay 30%. We, wait, wait, wait. I'm not saying that. I'm saying if we had the capability to pay the IPPs, mm. we would pay the IPPs. Current and, and, uh, and, and, legacy. and legacy. But my focus as a company was to say, let's make sure that moving forward, Moving forward, this is what we are going to do. And this was solely based on what the Ministry of Finance instructed me and said, look, we are going to find a way. You are supposed to negotiate with everybody on a case-by-case -case basis. Come back to me with your, your negotiations and stuff. Let me see what the figures are, and then we'll find a way to what? Clear those debts. So till then, just make sure that you don't add any more. So call everybody to the table. These are your firm instructions. See what the way forward is. Because with every single bill that you get, there's a portion that wasn't used. And the portion that wasn't used, what do you do? It doesn't go through the tariff. So if it doesn't go through the tariff and it's not going to be reclaimed, it's sitting on ECG's books. And these are the same, some of these IPPs have government guarantees. What was the rationale with the government guarantee? 
You understand? Have any of them called on the guarantee? Um, one of them called on the one of the on the, on the guarantee and took and took what they had to take, but still there was still something left. You understand? So the you cannot treat all IPPs the same. He has a question. You've ring fenced legacy debt as part of the negotiations recently. What we ring, ring fenced it? How so, and, and in, with what well, vehicle? When I used the word ring fenced, I used it as ring fenced. I'm giving it to the finance ministry for further discussions. Because I was given firm instructions not to touch that. Okay, so that was not part of your mandate? That was not part of my mandate. Your so mandate was to remain current? That's it. Deal with going for, don't that's accumulate it. more. Look, if you pick a PPA or you pick any contract in this sector, it has three components that you have to carefully analyze. Mm. The first one is a financial component. The second one is an operational component. And the last one is a societal or a social component. Now you are obliged to send electrification to certain areas in the country. How do you recoup your money from that? That's one. Operationally, there are times that you have to take certain decisions to make sure that the system is viable at the expense of maybe one IPP or at the expense of some residential area because you need to know where you make your money, so you have to balance it out. If you look at it financially, you'll be solely looking at it as is. Do you get what I mean? What, as in, this is the debt, two billion. But believe you me, the conversations being had, there is a possibility for that two billion to drop to a ridiculous amount that none of us even envisaged in the first place. I don't want to preempt because we've had conversations with every single IPV separately. And we've had conversations as to what looks realistic and what doesn't look realistic. And those agreements to somewhat, a few of them, we have something like a, some understanding. So based on that understanding, they said, some of them agreed some figures here and there. And that was what we looked at to agree on what? Moving forward. But it's interesting you say that the mandate going into these negotiations wasn't um, legacy. Because a lot of the conversation, even for the IPPs, it came in with debt. You owe us. Even with the Pay IPPs, our money. the IPPs, most of them, when you talk to them, they all know the World Bank is in. Okay. So they all have an idea there's some money coming in or there's some money going to come their way. But everybody wants to stake their claim. So everybody is trying to stake their claim. It's not my place to negotiate that. You understand? So who is going to do the, the, this next it's phase going, of negotiation? That, that next phase is going to be jointly done between ECG and Ministry of Finance. When will with that start? the Attorney General's office. When will that start? It started this afternoon. Uh, on Wednesday, there's going to be further consultations. And then we sit down and finalize. So to be clear, you are now going to negotiate over the IPP's debt. Legacy, Legacy debt. debt. Yeah. But you see, they have to be operational. It's that not, that is what you've agreed. Exactly. So I think that is sure. clear. Yeah, be, so be, but you I, can't go ahead. But and then for a lot of people, including myself, yeah. up until now, yeah. I've always been under the impression that all the last one month, you were actively negotiating legacy debt. <laughs> At least that's what Ellie Klim has, has, has said. That was, what, that was what we were trying to do, to negotiate legacy debt. But you, as you can realize, government from December has said they are not paying certain things, certain debts. Now, government is still in negotiation. They are going to the Paris Club. They are going to the Euro bond holders. Mm -hmm. So let government finish those conversations. Let's see what discounts they get. And let the finance minister come and talk. Mm. You understand? I mean, uh, uh, Eric, quickly on, on that. So now we have clarity. The conversations with you, your, you know, your real debt that you're complaining had been ring fenced. The conversation really is about going forward and remaining current. Well, thank you. I'm actually uh, hearing from him the first time that our legacy debt are uh, being ring fenced. We <laughs> actually presented two issues that is two uh, cases the first one is how do you pay or pay us our arrears then going forward how do you ensure sustainability he presented a solution a proposed solution to sustainability going forward awesome. and that is what we are looking at we've not had any discussion with regards to the legacy that as he mentioned so uh we are really concerned about that because those legacy that are actually needed. I know. Okay, so that's the first part of it. So what about the second part, which is what he says the agreement really revolves around? Remaining current. And that going forward, 
they will pay you what you build them, and they will pay you and remain current. Exactly. That is an option or a solution that we are happy about, that we do not want further accumulation of debt going forward. Like, you know, our kind of business runs on cash. So if we do not have sufficient funding or payment for our services, it worries the business. Within two, three months, look at the numbers of the accumulation. So we want to avoid such a situation. So that you've agreed to already, that you've closed, you've closed this conversation around remaining current. Oh, yes, we accepted that uh, offer he made. But like I said, there are some material content of mm. the document he presented to us that we need to sit down again and agree, have a mutual position that favors everybody. Okay, so earlier you said, this is the first time you're hearing that the legacy debt has been ring fenced, etc. But so what was your understanding before tonight? You were you well, were in the negotiations. You obviously have been in negotiations. Yes. Let me put it this way that we like I said, we presented two issues. The first one I mentioned has to do our legacy that are going forward. Mm -hmm. So in the solution that we are actually expecting, uh largely has to do with the outstanding that we required we mentioned that we are in default to our lenders so obviously we are looking for a portion of the outstanding to clear our lenders and also how do we go forward our operation do we need to go and borrow again to keep the plants on no. what are they doing to ensure liquidity solvency of the sector that is what we are talking about and today um, mr dubig mama says the conversation about legacy debt started were you part of it well, we know. Okay. But he's also Our clarified that going for the finance ministry together with them will lead that conversation. Yeah, the engagement we had with the Ministry of Finance respectively was basically uh, a formation of new negotiation team that may, I don't know if they are looking at the legacy debt or ECG is taking that as a responsibility. Okay. Mr. Jinapo. <laughs> uh, first of all, let me just clear this. Uh, Dr. Matthew, indeed, we met the IPPs. We played a key role and encouraged them to meet. They finally had a very fruitful meeting on Friday. Parliament says tomorrow. So, until Parliament convenes tomorrow, it will be very difficult to get official information. We get a lot of grievance information from our own sources. But when you're on such a program, you're a bit cautious and you want to put out to verified information that comes before the committee. Uh, Mr. Dewey, as a Jew, that is just five days ago, you couldn't pay these IDs. And so you classified, and based on your way, you said Jew as legacy. And then you're saying this jeweler, you have instructions from the finance minister that you should take care of it. The first question anybody who understands this sector would ask is that what has fundamentally changed between June and July yeah. such that you can stay 100% current with the ideas? That, that is really fundamental. Yeah, and I think that when we are making these promises, um, Mr. Pay, Jinapo, he says he has an answer for you. Uh, if that's a fundamental question, please hold your thought. Let's see if we can get an answer to that question quickly. Again, you know, transparency in this sector is, is key. The level of dishonesty and intellectual dishonesty actually in this sector doesn't help for growth. In our own style of being negative in this sector is what is killing the sector. I shared the same sentiments with the IPP chamber. I subjected ECG, in fact, with the permission of my board chair, we subjected ECG to a KPMG audit. You see, Honorable churned out some figures. That's what I'm saying. Honorable, if you had spoken to me, you would realize that fundamentally, there were some operational issues, and now those operational issues are gone. The transformation of the company is almost there. This is the KPMG document. Mm -hmm. This is ECG at 2022. He said 7 billion, which is true. This is ECG January to May. How much is that? 4, 4 billion. That's uh, 3.91 
billion. There is 1.6 debt that has been used against, that's a collection that has been used against ECG's taxes to clean ECG's books to make ECG what, viable to borrow. So that if you add this 1.6 to this 3.9, you're talking about 5 point something billion as at what? May. May 2023. Can we, can we still focus on so, this? So, so you're saying, so, so to, to, to direct to his question, in um, July, yeah. you are in a position to pay IPPs 100% when they send you a bill. So what I'm saying to you is this. As of now, the company's fortunes are turning around. Yeah, but the question, can you answer directly? So I'm going to answer you directly. As Eric William told you, we are going to pay them exactly what we promised that we were going to pay 100%. them. 100%? But that's again, before that, you'd be, you're going to be mischievous with that because I initially told you that as is now, with the, with the bills they are bringing, it is not sustainable. Mm. So we have started engaging them on these take or pay components to change the conversation from the amounts that they are talking about. Because to be honest with you, the figures they have now, they are not sustainable. Okay, but you are talking about the remaining current. So yeah. at the end of July, when yeah. they bring you a bill, it will be will current. You pay, would you pay it in full? It will be current. In full? Yeah. 100%. Based, based on the understanding we have with all of them individually, yes. Uh, let me, let, let, I'll not try if I go back to Jinapo because it was his substantive yeah. turn. This 100%, is it based on a renegotiated contract? It's based on a renegotiated conversation on the financials, which at the end of the day, the attorney general will look at because it has its own uh, implications. And then whatever the necessaries need to be done will be completed for it to move forward. Okay. But they have agreed in principle on those figures until such a time for those figures to take effect until such a time that when it's done, then it becomes... So you expect formal. that the bill you get at the end of July will be lower than what you got before July, based on the renegotiation. Yeah. That. That's why you're confident. That's why you're confident you can yeah. pay in full. Yeah, okay. we have an understanding on how to strip, to strip the... So, so they will still bring their old bill, yeah. but we have an understanding on how to strip it and give them what they're, we are supposed to give. Mr. Jinapo. The spokesperson for the IVPs is live on your program. Is that what they've agreed? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I mean, so but you, you are actually right, Mr. Issue. Jinapo. You, you, should I put that to him so that, so that we can all be wiser, right? Then you can come back in. I Let's do know, that. I don't know what, uh, what Dr. Stimantia, because he's put up two issues. The first one to do with legacy debt, that there was an agreement. Back. There is spokesperson for the IPP saying, no, they are not aware of that. Now there's a second one that says that they've come to an agreement on this month, July, how the bills will be treated, and that it was stripped the bill down. And I'm saying the spokesperson for the IPPC is right here. Is that the agreement you had with them? I mean, Ghanaians want to know. Yeah, but so let's, let's ask him. Let, let's, let's, let's ask him. Stay with me, because okay. it's your substantive turn. I promise you get that. But let's clarify that. I mean, Alec Plim, that's is that your understanding? No. So. Okay, so explain. Okay, so... So let me go forward. He says no. No, no, I wanted to. No, sorry, sorry, forgive me. Because of. Let, me, let him explain why no. Mr. Uh, Lickman, please, why no? They're on a case by case basis. Yeah, oh, please, I can't hear him. Please, on mute for me. Yeah, okay. I have, I have indicated that he made an offer to us based on going forward. And I said, generally, we are expecting a solution to all our outstanding. Now, he is making a point that he has engaged all the IPPs individually and have come to an agreement. And to the best of my knowledge, uh, there was no agreement like that because we have real-time information uh, amongst ourselves. So uh, I would be glad if we can confirm or clarify further. Okay, stay with me. And let me go to Jinapo and I'll hear from Dr. C. Mateo. No. Yes, see, uh, Mr. Jinapo. I would, I would appeal to my brother, the ECGMD, to tread a bit cautious. Look, this is a document submitted to Parliament, Memorandum on the Capital Financing Agreement. This issue of even your so-called ring fencing, it has a hold. Just this week, this Friday, they've submitted a memo. They want to borrow 600 and... Six hundred and twenty million dollars to pay car powers fuel, Letasco's fuel, all these are part of the legacy debt. And so when today 
Even after the ministry is presented this to us, I'm hearing from ECG, which is a company. ECG is not government. And saying that now, they're going to reference it, it sends very mixed signals. <laughs> I can agree, ECG, that you are in the tight corner. I can agree that things are difficult. But I think that we should tread cautiously in raising people's expectations. Even right on this program, the very IPPs you are engaging with, you are not in tandem with them. When it comes to legacy debt, you are not in tandem with them. When it comes to going forward in terms of the bills to keep current, you are not in tandem with them. Because eloquence speaks for all the IPPs. No, 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 it's because the IPPs cannot speak individually. That is why they've come together as a chamber and they've elected a spokesperson. And when they appeared before the Mines and Energy Committee, we had clarity that he speaks for them. So when he speaks, I can't take it lightly. Also, ECG, I can tell you for sure that even if you were to collect all the sales, 100% this month, you cannot pay the items. Because of the exchange rate differentials alone, a couple of months ago, the exchange rate was 6.5. Today, it's about 11. You haven't received a tariff increment commensurate to that. So let's be careful. If you've been in this sector for a while, it's a very difficult terrain. And when you are making commitments, especially on a program such as this, be careful not to tell the people of Ghana that you make a 100% payment. Other than that, end of June, and the, the days are quick. They might submit the bills to you, and you have it very, very tough. Um, uh, let, me, let me hear from uh, Dr. Steve Mattel. Doc, I mean, let me begin this next part of the phase of the conversation, which is... We, which is really, we've heard the shutdown has been averted. We've heard the details of the plan. I mean, there are issues that still need to be ironed out. The big question is, how do we ensure that we don't come back to this point? You, everything you've heard tonight, everything you've heard tonight, Dr. C. Mateo, yeah. where, where would you put, where would you put the, the pendulum in terms of when you swing it, in terms of how do we avoid... I mean, this back and forth, the conversations around shutting down or shutting down... <laughs> What's, what's a sustainable solution to this problem? Well, the solution I see to this problem lies in ensuring efficiency at ECG. Exactly. And this is where I want the new managing director to tell us exactly what he's doing to reduce technical and commercial losses. I know ECG also will need asset renewal. Yeah, machines, transformers are all old, and if you don't change them, there's no way you can achieve that efficiency level. How do they intend to raise money to finance their capital investments to be able to bring about efficiency? Mm. I think this is where we need to focus the conversation. Uh, otherwise, whatever we do, even if we had to raise tariffs, um, and we don't deal with the inefficiencies, we'll always be back to the same situation. I mean, the challenge of um, inefficiency and unsustainability of, of debt, ECG zone debt, and, and, and ability to keep the lights on. So I think that the managing director should be telling us. I, I'm aware of certain things being done, but I don't know how much that translates into in terms of additional savings or revenues coming in to help ECG deals deal with these um, debt challenges. I'll get him to answer that question, but I want to take a quick break. When I return, we also need to diagnose this problem, where we are, where we are. And as I said at in my intro, these threats didn't start today. Since 2019, there have been three of them already. And now we are having a conversation around how to ensure that this remains the last time IPPs will threaten to shut down. But we've heard from governments suggest, and the government has suggested, that the current problem is fundamentally based on the contracts that were signed before. And I know that's a very controversial area. When I return, I'll get John Judapo, who was a deputy power minister, to, to deal with that for me very quickly about the contract that was signed then, what really were the rationale for them, and does he accept that it's part of the problem today? And if that's the case, how do you resolve it going forward? And then uh, Mr. Dubik Mahama was also chipping about some of the questions that Dr. C. Matia has asked. 
What is a long-term plan to ensure we don't return to another threat of shutdown that then is averted last minute only for us to return to that same point again? Stay with me. And thanks for staying with us here on PM Express. We are talking about a subject that affects everybody. And one of the most dreaded uh, topics in this country, uh, it's doom so. When it's mentioned, everybody panics. And, and the ECG coughs. We all catch the cold. And that's why this conversation is important. We don't want to repeat what has happened in the past, but also we need to be sustainable going forward. The, we, we literally, literally escaped another doom so just over the weekend. And so the conversation must be had. Um, how do we ensure that we don't return to this threat? Because if you're threatening and they avert last minute, it just, it will catch up, right? That's what we're having this conversation. And as you know, PM Express is always brought to you by Cherry Tree Properties. We develop spaces as though we were going to occupy them ourselves. Sink text tanks, it is strong, it is tough. Alomo Betas experience greatness in every moment. And Ghana AIDS Commission. Now, uh, no matter your water needs, Syntex Tank has it all. Syntex Tank is first to introduce double layer tank, and now you can have as many layers as you want. Syntex Tank is first to introduce white inner layer tanks in Ghana. We now introduce to you the customer specs order, which lets you order any color and size of preference. That is truly bespoke. Syntex Tank gives you the longest warranty of seven years which no other tank gives you in Ghana. So whatever your water consumption, size of project or demand, let's choose Syntex Tank. We have agents nationwide. Call Syntex on 0244-335-168 or shop online at syntexgh.com. Uh, syntexgh.com. Syntex Tank, a strong, a tough. And I've been talking about homes a lot re recently. Uh, desires are indeed wishes. Beauty is a promise of happiness, but passion is everything. Thinking about buying a new home, talk to those who build with passion. Sloan Square, a new gated community development at Sakumono, developed by Cherry Tree Properties, is one of a kind, well-planned luxury you've never experienced. Contact them on 0553 662 366. 0553 662 366. Cherry Tree Properties, sophistication, and class. With me is the MD of ECG, uh, some of the big Mahama in the studio. John Junapo is a ranking on the Mice Energy Committee in Parliament. Uh, Alec Plem Akpetoboy is the uh, is a CEO of the, uh, the, the Chamber of IPPs and uh, Dr. Steve Mateo. Um, I, I want to, I started Dr. Steve Mateo about the solutions going forward and I want to bring in Mr. Junapo into the conversation. Mr. Junapo, um, one of the areas that government has talked about um, over the last few years, and it's still a live issue now, is the contracts that will have to be renegotiated um, as part of the solutions going forward. I, I've always wanted to ask that question in terms of that approach that government is taking. Um, considering that a lot of those contracts, and government has actually held the position that if those contracts had not been signed the way they were, we wouldn't be where we are today. First of all, do you agree with that assessment? And what was the real rationale behind the contracts that were signed before that government had maintained is part of why we are where we are, for which reason they are now negotiating? Please unmute for me. Uh, I can hear. Loud and clear. I can, yes. Completely disagree with that. First of all, these were contracts that went to the Public Procurement Authority. These are contracts that went to Parliament and they were approved unanimously, assuming without admit. Government formed the Energy Sector Recovery Program in 2019. They are supposed to end their tenure this year. The question you ask yourself is what has come of it? Of it? Government came to Parliament as part of the Eurobond issuance and requested for $1 billion to refinance all these IPPs. Those agreements were approved. Government got the one billion. Soon as government got the one billion, they used the money for other non-power related expenditure. That's a fact, and you can check from parliament. 
Excellent revenues alone. Last year, they got 6.2 billion. The energy debt service account got 2.2 billion. They used only 1.2 billion. The remaining 1 billion, they applied it to other areas other than energy sector related areas. So what are they talking about? And when you say it's expensive, relative to what? I have all the average targets from our peers in West Africa and in Africa. And I'm telling you that this is an official document from ADB, African Development Bank. Ghana is among the lowest. Now there's been this issue of take or pay. I still it's a crime. I have a contract here signed by... Uh, we've not received mm. any substantive mm. payment uh, to... Can I move on? Yeah, Mr. Java, please proceed. Yes, I have a contract here signed by this current and Mr. Samuel Dubik. And I have the, the contract here. You can see this is his name and his signature. The AXA contract was a 370 megawatt plant for five years. We were told that we had so much capacity, we didn't need access. You are living testimony to that. We're told that we're even using just 25% of the capacity we had. Soon as that contract expired, it was extended for 15 years. Not just extended for 15 years. This is the contract document. As you can see, this is the original contract document. And I refer you to page 19. Table five. Mm -hmm. If you look at the table properly, there's what they call a capital recovery charge, 1.86 US cents per kilowatt hour for the first 120 months. That's capital recovery. Capital recovery is nothing but what we call take or pay. Because they need to pay their financiers. And that is what Eli Clem was talking about. That whether you sell the power or not, as for those who finance your project, you need to pay them. The second one has to do with even the monthly fixed o &M. And let me just quote it. In case the plant is dispatched, it's 1.78. In case the plant is not dispatched, that means that the plant doesn't even deliver power. We'll pay 0 0.7650 US cents per kilowatt hour. And it goes further. And if you come here, it takes effect from 1st June 2021. Not just that, that charge Sub be subject to annual price escalation to take effect using 1st June 2021 as the base year. Oh, yeah. So where is this issue of take or pay? As if it's only under one government that you have the take or pay clause. And I'll share this document with uh, Dr. Stimanti. I don't know whether he has it. If you read this document, there's an element of capital recovery even this year. Mm. They just signed an agreement with Jensa. Jensa has completed the pipeline to Kumasi. The power plants are not ready in Kumasi. If you read the Jensa agreement, from next month, expect that Jensa will bring its bill. That is capital recovery. Energy sector projects are very expensive, time consuming, a long gestation period, and so there will always be an element of capital recovery. Mm, but like you said, going forward, what do you do? Yeah, I mean, on, on that, I mean, that uh, 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 on that, do you agree that negotiating existing contracts is part of the long-term solution? Why not? If they are ready, they told us they had negotiated these contracts as of 2019. Go and read the 2019-2020 budget. Mm. The finance minister even quoted savings of billions of cities from these so-called renegotiations. Yeah. Which of them have they renegotiated so far? Which yeah. of them? Axel has aspired. You had the option not to engage them because the contract had elapsed. And I've just proven to you that they've not only extended it. In the contract agreement, there are elements of take or pay in terms of capital recovery. Mm. Stay, stay, so stay, 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 stay with me, Mr. Junapo. I'll come back to the solutions. And I'll hear Alec Plem's take and Dr. C. Mattel also on that. Yes, so you're renegotiating. But that Chorus. We've, we've, had, we've had for so long. Let me address Honorable Jinapo. Honorable, you gave me some advice. And on news file, I gave some, I said something. Anyone who tries to play politics with this 
This is a national issue. And you cannot compare AXA second to the, the old, what do you call it, PPAs. I do agree. There's a 40% take or pay in there. But you cannot compare 100% take or pay to 40% take or pay. They are not the same, honorable. God has my opportunity. Now, to now let me land. Let me land. I kept quiet. Oh, wait. I'm, just, I'm not saying I want now to. Now let's, let's take, take, let's take, power. let's take car power. Let's take car power. Honorable, I believe strongly you have their invoice. You know their invoices and their bills. So I have the whole agreement here. Just oh, don't, don't worry. It's not hundred percent because I know I know how much they would invoice on a monthly basis. So let's take car power as a monthly invoice. Honorable, have you seen one of Car Power's monthly invoices before? Everything here. <laughs> so <laughs> how, much, how, much, how much is Car Power's monthly invoice? $29 million. What is wrong with that? No, pause, pause. We what are just is wrong starting. with that? $29 million. Uh -huh. The take or pay component of it is what? $17.5 million. That cannot be. You are misreading it. No, 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 The idle capacity component of that is eight million dollars. Mr. Jinapo, I kept quiet. Mr. Jinapo, I'll come back to you. Mr. Jinapo, let me speak. I'll come back to you so that we can try and find some middle ground. To be honest, you can never compare 100% take or pay to 40% take or pay. Mr. 17.5 million is what? Is the take or pay component. Of car power. Now, whether you use it or not. That's the 17. Amandi, Twin City. This is a monthly. Monthly. Amandi, Twin City. Total month 15.5. Take or pay component is what? $9 million. AXA, 9.5 million. Take or pay is 4.7. Zero idle capacity. Zero millions in idle capacity. Car power has. Eight million dollars monthly in idle capacity. Amandi has six million dollars in idle capacity. Now let's take Sen Power. Twenty-three million dollars monthly. Fifteen point one million is what take or pay. You have idle capacity of seven million. My brother, how do we start solving such a problem if we don't take a holistic look? That's why I keep saying, let's not drop the, the ball at anybody's doorstep. But it should be a national decision. Because if you start pointing fingers, start pointing fingers, what you're actually doing is empowering the next person not to even negotiate. So why don't we all just sit down? Honorable, I'm a stone throw away from you. Why don't we all just sit down? Say, let's take each one, one by one. Sam. Let's look at what we can do about this. Let's look at what we can do about this. Have you spoken to them about this? That is how we build a nation. So why are you? That is how we fix a problem. Why, why are you in doing that? That is the approach I took with each and every one of them. And it, why are you in reach agreement with each? That everyone? is how come we had an idea of what a monthly figure should be. Because yes. For each of them. For each and every one of them. Because listen, you cannot say there's zero capacity charge. No. But what we are saying is that excess capacity and idle capacity charge should not come in. But rather the capacity charge that you use to generate the specific energy that you asked for. So let's say you, so that would be. You are, you are paying them for the cost of production? The cost of energy. For the cost of energy. Yeah, so that would be the fuel, mm. the capacity used to produce whatever energy you took from them. You understand? That makes it much more realistic because per the grid impact assessment we had now, by four years' time, we have to double our capacity again. We have to start planning ahead. So all of these plants here, we cannot afford to lose any of them now. We have to build on top of them. We cannot build on top of them in isolation. We ha it has to be a concerted effort. So I'm glad he said in his submission that it went to parliament. Maybe at that point, we thought we all could do it. But to be very honest with you now, it's not sustainable. Mm. So it's, 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 and to be fair to Mr. Mantia, I would rather go to speaking about ECG, what we are trying to do, the steps we are about to take, and to close the gap. Honorable Sitting there, you know he was a board member of ECG. And the point of that is? So he knows what we are going through as a company. 
So that's how we all grow together. You've been there. You know the problem. Let's all stick together. Let's find the solution at the base. If it is not done right, then we, we can flog so the horse. let me ask you. So as far as renegotiation is concerned. Just, 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 a, just a second. Uh, I'll, yeah. I'll come to you briefly. Uh, I've seen it together. Yeah. Let's aid. I'll come to you. Don't, yeah, yeah, don't worry about that. Allowed, very very quickly. So, so on the solutions, you... I, I hear you say you're convinced renegotiating the contract is such an important part of solving this long term. I am telling you. Or, if we or don't, possibly even the only solution. Yeah, look. Not the only solution. Look, but, look at the bills. Look at the bills involved. So, so, so you, you are not even talking. The few, there's fewer charges. There's, it, there's, comes, it comes back to, so you've said you make, you have, are all the IPPs now agreed to your proposals in terms look, of the... Look, I, I keep saying it and I keep praising Sonana Sogli. They have a take or pay. They've never charged us take or pay. Mm. They deal with us on a take and pay ag ag agreement. I do agree. Some of the, the, the finances of these things are very expensive. Yeah. So some of these terms are there. But you know, again, the reason why I'm saying it's a national issue is before the company started, they needed some guarantees. Maybe you gave them a GCSA, you mm. gave them a PCOA. But they are all now live, living animals. Well, when do you hope to conclude? Because this renegotiation conversation has been going on for years now. You when do you hope to conclude them? No, 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 no. Con we have to sit with them. So that's why now... Yeah, but that, that's been happening for at least so four pause, years now. Pause. Now the conversation is, Ministry of Finance, ECG, what are you seeing? How do you understand this? Every single one in the conversation we've had with them. Car Power has how many more years left on its PPA? Mm. You understand? It hasn't been renegotiated. So we are, we are in a good place to have a chat, do you okay. still want to stay or you want to go? If you want to stay, let's look at it. What are the things that could be done to make sure that it comes to a tariff that is what? Mm. Comfortable for yeah. Ghana. Um, Mr. Janapo, because I have to bring others in, let me give you a quick two minutes and then I'll bring in Dr. Matia and Alec First of all, uh, this is the official document from the minister. It says that 150 million for settling of long overdue debt to car power for electricity generation not capacity, electricity generation. 50 million to Listasco for fuel supply to AXA. If the plant is idle and is not running, it won't consume 50 million dollars of fuel for only 2021. 100 million to Listasco for fuel supply to car power. So this your issues that you are bringing is a complete misunderstanding of the whole sector. Finally, That's finally, Evans, we had a five-year capital recovery for AXA, 100%. You yourself say 100%. What it means is that by the five years, they would have recovered the cost of investment. And so, having recovered the cost of investment, you go to give them a capital recovery again of 40%. Oh, that's and correct. you sit Let on live TV and say that that is the Let best. Me correct it. Let me correct it. Let me correct it. Where is it coming from? Let me correct it. Let me correct it. When you pay 40% capacity for a plant, that has been fully amortized. Let me, let, let me correct it. It's not, it's not fully amortized. Let but you see, it. finally, just before, because I think Dr. Enko also wants to no. make a point. The point I was making was simple. That even in the power sector, whether you like it or not, it will be an element of capital recovery. That is all I was making. So that you don't make it look like no. if under one administration, <laughs> the contract has an element of capital recovery, it is bad. Because now there's evidence to suggest that all the administrations, whether you like it or not, there will be an element of capital recovery. That's all what I was trying to do, and not to engage in what you call politics. Far from that. Let me finish. Okay, so let's let me get Alec Plem's take then, and I'll 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 come I'll come I'll come to you. Let me get Alec. Let me land this point also. Do what on on which specific point? On the capital recovery thing that he's talking about. What's the what does the agreement say? Look. Access engines when they came to Ghana was HFO. They have retrofitted those engines to gas. Mm. Who's going to pay for that? So you agree with me? No, I've never, you, I've never, the, listen, that's what I said. 40% take or pay cannot be the same as 100. Honorable, can you let me speak? Okay, very briefly because I need to hear. Like, Honorable, let yeah, me so, speak. So, so your, your retort to his. My retort to him is this this intellectual dishonesty must stop at some point. 
For us to Please, find but, 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 but he says he, he, agree, a bit more he says serious. he agrees with you about the there national is, solution. The, program. the national, the national, the national conversation. To the national if conversation. This is, if this is how we we'll hold this program, our back. Honorable, calm down, calm down. You, calm down. you don't have to do that. It hasn't got okay. into that. Okay, yet. okay. So let let let, 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 me, let me try and resolve that. Bit. Honorable, I'm sorry. Some more, some more, some more, some more. Um, he just he just said he just he just said I'm sorry. So Evans, this is HFO in your contract. Yeah. No, no, no. Honorable, no, That's no, right. it's, it's you see, just a second, just a second, just a second, just a second. Let me, because I need to get the others in. Okay, okay, gentlemen, stop shouting. No, both of you are talking, so nobody will hear you actually. So it's it, no, you're not achieving much you with it. Yeah, Mr. Jinapo, just hold on, Mr. Jinapo, just hold on for me. Let me get Eric Clem's take on the solutions. Eric Clem, tell me, what would it take to avoid? You know, down the line, months, weeks down the line, you coming back to say you have to shut down again and, and threaten. What would it take? What is the solution for you? Thank you very much. For where as I see it as a, an independent investor, I think ECG holds the key to the sustainability of the sector. We need to diagnose ECGs activities, both economically and technically. Uh, Honorable Jinapo made a statement that assuming ECG goes for all of its revenue for power that is sold to consumers, it will still not be able to pay for all the actors on the supply chain. Mm. What is the reason for which it cannot pay? This is something worth investigating. Mm. <clears throat> we, we are well aware that uh, Ghana's, uh, let me say, households, we have about 8.5, about 8.5 million households. Let's say about 85% have access to electricity. And a big question is that, assuming ECG is supplying all these households, why is ECG not able to recover all the revenue from power sold to these households? As an answer to this question should be able to close the revenue gap. Exactly. A second issue is that we should take a critical look at the revenue leakages in ECG's activities. I'm happy that they have embarked on revenue mobilization, audit of the system, which is yielding results. It needs to be intensified to close that particular gap. And one point of concern or serious concern that I would like to suggest to the MD is that they should monitor the evacuation point of power to their receiving end. There is a great gap of transmission loss. Transmission loss is, is broad. I believe he knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. We, the generators, will be metering them or be invoicing him based on what has left our point of evacuation. But eventually, they receive less than what actually was transmitted. That gap needs to be seriously investigated. And closing that gap, I believe all this issue of blaming contracts, uh, blaming take or pay contracts, we realize that it's totally irrelevant. Mind you, take or pay contract are nothing strange and has not uh, any negative effect on any of the parties. It is also important to know that this power purchase agreement normally originates from the off-taker, in this case ECG, to the seller or to the, to, to the generator or the supplier. And we try to protect each other's interests by identifying our risk and defining the mitigation measures. So I find it difficult to understand why, excuse me to say, government commentators will be blaming the challenges of the sector on the content of this agreement. Mm. Again, Honorable Jinapo mentioned the reason for which we have this kind of agreement. To protect the lenders, no lender will advance financial support to you if they do not have assurance on that how what, what they, they are, produce they are lending mm. will be paid. Yeah. So I, I think we need to look yeah. at ECG as a serious case study rather than focusing and, and, on and, the... And, and Dr. Dr. Matthew, you started off by talking about the solution lies at the ECG. You exactly. talked about the, the interventions. 
I wonder what your take is on the focus on the renegotiation of the contracts. How significant is that to the solution? Yeah, um, Evans, I think it's very, very significant. It starts with the renegotiation of those contracts first. But again, there's a dimension that we must not overlook. Uh, there are too many um, um, energy funds and, and, and schemes that need to be audited and streamlined. We're talking about, for instance, um, ESLA. We don't know how much comes into ESLA and how that is managed. Then we had COVID levy, we have government stabilization payments to ECG, auxiliary services charges to GENCOs and all that. I think we need some transparency in these schemes that are all geared towards addressing the energy sector challenges. Uh, we need to audit these funds and to be, make sure that they are being applied efficiently. And then lastly, ECG itself, we need to do much more to reduce um, commercial losses. Um, we know that the, the metering, I mean, not all the customers are captured. Those who consume power mm. are captured in their database. I know they are doing something about it, but they need to expedite action to okay. ensure that they are able to capture all consumers into their database. Mm. Again, we know that at the time when the politicians got involved in the uh, supply of meters, of meters. Uh, there were some that uh, were substandard and therefore were not reading correctly. They need to be able to standardize all meters to ensure that they don't get short change uh, yeah. in, in, in the course of and, and I have 30 seconds. So I'll share it with Jinapo and, and Mr. Dubik in the studio. Mr. Jinapo, to you first. If you have to single out one solution that is most critical in ensuring that we don't return to a place where Eric Blim and his, and his uh, IPPs will no longer be threatening us, what will that single most important solution be that must be implemented immediately? So, sorry, please uh, unmute. Please unmute. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm Yeah, I can, I can hear you, yeah. Transparency, that's all. Mm. Look, Mr. Dubik and his team, ECG, their main focus should be that power bought and sold they are able to pay. pay for, yeah. That is it. The rest, leave it for policy makers. Okay. If the policy maker says, don't charge for reserve margin, that shouldn't be your headache. Your headache as ECG MP is that I bought X amount of power, I sold Y amount of power. Try okay. and pay those in the value chain. Okay. If there's anything in terms of reserve margin or whatever, we, the policy makers, would have to deal with that. And that's what Dr. Stimanjo talked about. Okay. In okay. 2020, the minister came up with energy sector recovery levy. Yeah. and said he will use that to pay for the capacity charge. What has happened to that money? Yeah, Mr. Is Jinapo, that what duty to correct those issues? Yeah, I, I just have 30 seconds. So let me just give it the, the last 30 seconds to you. Uh, I guess we need to end by asking, is this the last time we are going to hear IPPs threatening to shut down based on everything you know and negotiated? Can you say that confidently? Confidently, I can say that. And I'll use my 30 seconds to speak to my elder brother, John Jinapo. Honestly, Honorable, we have to work together because from all of these conversations, what I have realized is that there are so many disjoints in the same issue that we are all trying to fill. Mr. Steve Mantial said it. The amount of jobs that we are doing and that work we are putting in ECG, that gap would be closed. But in the interim, we have to carry everybody along. So, Honorable, as I keep saying, First of all, I would like to apologize for what the outburst that happened between myself and him. He's my elder oh, it's brother. Normal. It happens. Yeah, he's, it happens. he's my elder brother, so we'll, we'll, deal, we'll deal with it at home. Yeah. But at the, end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, we have to work together. Yeah. It's, it is a national issue, and we need to find the solution. And I'm glad he says the policymaker will fix that. Yeah. So for me, I'm a technocrat. I'll do what I have to do. Close but, but I have your word that this is the last time Eric Plim and IPPs will threaten the shutdown. I, you have my word on that. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your evening.